Good morning everyone. We're just about to leave Bellingham campsite. Without thinking, I just put a mint in my mouth, so uh, <laughs> a bit awkward. We've had two nights here, really enjoyed it. We went to Cragside, the National Trust House yesterday, and today we're making our way to Beamish. It's good to have you along. Catch up with us later. Bye for the moment. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. These maps show the relative position of the marina to Cragside and Beamish. Hello. If you turn left of the coal truck, left, yeah. Yeah. go along that road, drop down, that's where the rest of these vehicles are. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Wow. Gosh, it's very busy. Look at the coaches all stacked up over the there. Left way. And the coal truck. But they've got this uh, blockage. Oh, left. Be careful here. They're trying to cross the road here. It's okay. Did you want it to go? No, yeah. I think it wants me to go down there. Oh. Well, you can't though, can you? Oh yeah, he said yeah. go that way. It's Easter weekend and the museum is extremely busy, so we're having to queue. Well, we're in, having queued for about 20 minutes. There are trams and classic buses running today and whilst we hoped to travel on one, we never did. We're looking across to the 1820s Pockley Wagonway. We'll visit that shortly and maybe even have a ride on the train. Here comes one of the historic buses now. and another, but this time a double deck. And now another tram. We're walking through birch wood. I can't tell you much about it, but woodland crafts like basket making and wood turning are demonstrated here. We wandered around in a rather haphazard fashion. The site is 350 acres, that's about 140 hectares, and there's so much to see. Old Lancashire boiler here. The winding engine was built for Beamish Colliery in 1855 by James Joyce and Co at their Fourth Banks Works in Newcastle. The colliery closed down in 1962 and was left derelict, ready for demolition. Frank Atkinson, founder of the museum, persuaded the National Coal Board not to do that and with assistance from English Heritage, it was dismantled and relocated to the museum. The engine is of national importance as it is the sole survivor of a type designed in 1800 by Phineas Crowther of Newcastle. The mine shaft was 400 feet deep and took men up and down in cages and empty tubs went down as well and full ones of coal came up.
in we go. This is an unusual loco with a vertical boiler built in 1871 and this an 040 Peckett saddle tank loco. 040 being the wheel arrangement using the white classification for steam and other locomotives. We are in the 1900s pit village which shows life in the period leading up to the First World War. Many original buildings have been dismantled at their original sites and transported here where they have been rebuilt. Others are recreations of typical buildings of the time. We're looking across to a section of the Colliery Railway and here comes the open top double decker we saw earlier which is a replica B-type bus of the London General Omnibus Company to a 1910 design but not in London livery. Let's visit the chapel. That's an impressive projector. Wagonways first appeared in Britain in about 1600 and played a key part in the following centuries for the transportation of coal, this being the largest industry in the North East. Coal was taken to the rivers Tyne and Weir to be shipped to other parts of the country. Up to 1800 Wagonways were powered by horses or gravity. The Great Shed is based on railway pioneer Timothy Hatworth's erecting shop in Shieldon, County Durham. After 1800, iron rails stationary steam engines and locomotives came into use. The Pockley Wagon Way is representative of the Stockton and Darlington Railway of 1825. The original Puffing Billy, built by William Headley, was in use from 1814 and worked for nearly 50 years on the Wylam to Leamington Wagon Way. Let's take a ride on the train. Can't beat the open air when travelling by rail.
The Wimjin was used to raise men and coal out of the mines in the 18th and early 19th centuries. Just found some very interesting equipment in the field. Looks as though some of it has come from a beam engine. Not really sure about the cogged wheels though, <laughs> but quite an interesting piece of kit. We're having a really enjoyable time. There is so much to see. It's a very busy day here because it's a, a holiday. It's the Easter period. There's lots of schools here and school children, that sort of thing. The 1900s town may be familiar to viewers who have watched the TV series Downton Abbey. I recall seeing the garage myself and some of the Beamish vehicles were also used. Let's take a look around the garage. Note the cobbled floor. place for everything and everything in its place. Unfortunately, we didn't get the time to have a good look around all the shops. I would have liked to have gone into many of them, if not all. Quick, march! <laughs>
This is Rowley, or possibly Rowley Station, and was built in 1867 for the North Eastern Railway. It was the first relocated building to be opened at Beamish in 1976 by the then Poet Laureate John Betjeman. This signal box dates from 1896 and came from Car House East. It's nice to see the block signalling equipment. It's so ingenious how this works with a series of interlocking bars and rods beneath the operating floor. The frame is by Mackenzie and Holland of Worcester. for weighing and bagging coal.
There is so much more to see here than I have covered. We never got to see the 1820s landscape and Pockley Old Hall or the 1940s farm. Under construction is the 1950s town and 1950s farm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at Beamish Museum. We've had a fabulous time, particularly riding on Puffing Billy. That was quite a treat. I wasn't expecting that. We've walked around the whole circuit. We haven't been on any buses or trams. We've walked just over three miles, I think it is. And it's been fabulous. When we looked ahead at the weather for this trip, it was not promising at all but uh, the sun has been out, it's been quite a warm day. So it's that time when I thank you all for watching, ask you to look after yourselves, your friends and families, take the utmost care. Is there anything you'd like to say, Jasmine? No, I've had a lovely, I've had a wonderful day. Oh, it's, it's been amazing, really amazing. A little yeah. bit tired now, I think. Yeah, we have both enjoyed it, we're both very tired. Yeah. So I've just said take the utmost care, <laughs> so until next time, bye, bye for now.